there. So today I'm going to talk a bit about uh, Kotlin, which is a new-ish programming language. Uh, 1.0 came out uh, in I think February 15th of uh, 2016, I want to say, and uh, version 1.1 just came out very recently. Um, so first, uh, first off, what is Kotlin? It's a JVM language, so it, um, it compiles to the JVM and runs anywhere Java runs. Um, it's developed by JetBrains, and they're the people who make IntelliJ, RubyMine, uh, WebStorm, all the IDEs that are awesome. Um, so it's got the corporate support. Um, it's interoperable with Java, so you can use any of your Java libraries, and also in Java you can use Kotlin libraries, and there's no difference or effort needed to um, move between the two. Um, so your Java library, or your Java code doesn't need to know that you're working with Kotlin, and your Kotlin doesn't need to know that you're working with Java. And one of the stated goals of the language is to compile as quickly as Java. Um, I guess one of the things that kind of spurred it was they wanted, uh, they liked Scala at JetBrains, but it was super slow to compile and it needed its runtime and all that. Um, so one of the goals of Kotlin is to compile as quickly, and it doesn't need its own runtime. Um, <clears throat> so does Kotlin work with Android? Yes, it does. You can use it with uh, things like Spring because uh, Spring is, you know, Java library and works perfectly fine. <coughs> Enterprise Java works fine with it, and uh, React.js it works with that too because Kotlin can compile to JavaScript. <coughs> I have a slide for that. <laughs> I made this slide and I was laughing so hard at it that I left it in. Um, and I have a self quote here that Kotlin is super easy to introduce into existing code bases. Um, it, it comes as a Gradle plugin, a Maven plugin, I think they call them, an ant task. Um, a lot of IDEs, like, especially the JetBrains ones, have first party support. Um, so if you're using any of those build systems or IDs, you just add it into your project and um, you, know, you can start writing Kotlin right away. Um, one Ryan place that Schultz? I... <laughs> this guy. <laughs> um, <A> genius. <laughs> let's see, what was I going to say next? Okay. So um, one of the first things I started doing when I was putting this presentation together was um, I was going to show off like what, what can you do in Kotlin? Um, but I sooner started realizing a better question to answer before that would be, um, what don't we have to do in Kotlin? Um, <clears throat> so let's start off with some Java. Say we want a model of a person, and they have a name, an age, and a city. So a really simple model class. But, um, you know, so you start with this, and then you're like, okay, i got to add my constructor. Then you want a way to compare it, so you add a equals method as well as a hash code, so you can you know, store it in your hash maps and whatnot. Um, and then finally, you want a two string method, so you can print it out. Um, <coughs> it's a lot of code. That's 40 lines of Java right there. Um, my IDE wrote probably 35 lines of those for me, but that's still a lot of code. Um, any guesses as to how many lines you can do this with in Kotlin? Eight. What? One. Yep. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in Kotlin they have a thing called data classes, and a, a data class will do all of that for you, and you just define your properties right in the uh, definition. Okay. So let's talk about some features of Kotlin. <laughs> so in Kotlin, uh, the variable type comes after the name. So um, do that. It also has type inference, so the compiler note is able to know that you're defining a, a variable called is party time and setting it to true, so it knows that's a boolean. Um, yeah, I'll talk about that later. Uh, it's got lambdas. Do that, you can pass lambdas by reference and however you would normally do things. Um, a first class feature of the language is also null safety. So um, I define this variable and I cannot set it to null. It'll throw a compiler error. Um, 
if I want to be able to set it to null, I can put a uh, question mark after the string, or after the type. Uh, <coughs> that'll let me set it to null at a later date. Um, if you try to call uh, a method on a null object, um, it'll also throw an error. So you've got this, uh, this safe call operator. So if uh, listener is null, it'll just skip over it. And I actually think it returns nothing, which is a special type in Kotlin. Um, if this happens, it won't crash. And then if you really, really know what you're doing, and you think you know more than the compiler, you can use the double, uh, the double exclamation point <coughs> operator, which I've heard referred to as the hold my beer operator. <laughs> um, and in this example, it will throw a uh, Kotlin null pointer exception. But you shouldn't really see null pointer exceptions when you're writing that. As we already saw, that uh, we've got our data classes, and that's great for writing our domain models. Um, Kotlin has a no ternary operator. Um, instead, you can just do inline if else. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, it also has Elvis operator, which is the uh, question mark colon. Um, if you've done Groovy, you probably recognize this operator. Um, basically, in this example, if name is null, it's going to just give you Bob. Um, it's kind of like when you have a ternary operator in your first case is to return the thing you're checking, if it's null or not. Um, and then here's a general code sample um, that I just kind of wanted to wanted to walk through a little bit. Because um, that's most of the language features already. But um, here we have a class definition, and the uh, class properties are defined up here. Um, and to construct it down here, you notice that there's no new keyword. You just call the constructor, and it gives you the object. Um, functions are defined with the word fun. I guess they're fun, and you put the return <laughs> type over there. Um, you've got string <coughs> interpolation, which is great. Um, no ugly concatenating and string building. Um, print line, and if you run it, you get that. Um, values are immutable, so once you define them, they're basically final, so you can't change them. Um, you can use the var keyword if you want something that's non-final. Um, that's good for this example. And then the final, I guess, feature I want to talk about is Android. Um, there's a Kotlin Android plugin, and um, here's just a brief example of an activity class. And those of you familiar with Android or be used to calling uh, find view by ID or using uh, a butter knife to wire that up, there is a library for Kotlin called Cotter Knife by Jake, who also wrote Butter Knife. But it's not really that necessary, I guess, because uh, it's uh, Kotlin's synthetic Android add-on will actually bind to that for you at the activity level. Um, so if you have a text view that has the idea of text view, you just can simply have this automatic text view there. Um, and then there's just like a ton of stuff for Kotlin, and I wanted to just give kind of like a, almost a lightning talk type introduction to it. Um, just kind of motivate why it's pretty cool, pretty exciting. Uh, I tend to be skeptical of new languages, but I, JetBrains backing it as well as like the level of community support I've seen out of it over the past year, I guess, that I've been following it has kind of won me over, so I'm going to be using it as much as I possibly can. Uh, anyone have any questions, discussion? Blake. I hope I'm not re-asking the question, but what is the debugging? It's the same as um, Java, so okay. you can use your Java ID to you know debug stuff through code and inspect. In, is that doing that in Kotlin or in the generated Java? Um, like, is it generating I'm, Java or? It doesn't <laughs> generate Java. No, okay. it compiles right to bytecode. code. So um, okay. I think it's you know the same way Java debugging works, where it can you know your debugger resolves. Uh, the bytecode symbols back to your source. So I think it's just IDE support for that. Cool. Am I 
Why did they name it Kotla? It's, it's named kind of after. Name. So the development team is in uh, St. Petersburg, Russia, and Kotlin is the name of an island right near St. Petersburg. So. There you go. There you go. Not very marketable. Let's see. <laughs> Tiffany had her hand up. Got all these. So yeah. Tiffany. Does it compile to ES5 or ES6? Um, it does. Uh, I believe five point one. Uh, Tracy. Do they have a cute mascot? Uh, no, it's Pretty just cool. the K. What? <laughs> yeah. He's not using it. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we're at, does it support closures of like Groovy or? Yeah, so it's got the. I, got, I called them lambdas when I mentioned it, but uh, yeah, there's closures. Okay, there's the same, so okay. Yeah, I, I believe they, the official term for them is units. Could you, could you uh, talk a little bit about <coughs> why it's better than Groovy overall? I mean, it seems like there's. I saw some improvements, but. Yeah, so I think the problem with Groovy is that um, it may have compi a slower compile time, and I think Groovy, you have, I may be wrong here, but there's a runtime component that you have to include for Groovy, whereas with Kotlin, you don't have to include any additional libraries. Um, at least I, that's why it, got, it was so easy for uh, Kotlin to be you know, working on Android with no extra effort, um, just because you don't have to have a Android-friendly runtime for it. And I think, yeah, stated goal is also like work on Android. It's good. Any other questions? Are there limitations or disadvantages um, to you? I guess the limitations and disadvantages are just that uh, maybe you know, you're, you're still skeptical about it and don't want to drop it into a project. Um, because any limitations you're going to encounter um, are probably something you can get around by just dropping back to regular Java, <laughs> since they can coexist so easily. Um, I was playing around. I have a had a sandbox project on my laptop, and I had both uh, Java and Kotlin, and I was just calling back and forth to classes that I wrote in each. And it was really, it was as smooth and flawless as I said it was. It actually surprised me how easy it was to mix the code bases. And there's no problem. So I think if I ran into a Kotlin limitation, I would just write it in Java. I have a question. Um, is there like a is there like a non corporate like standard or support organization for it, or is it just like IntelliJ owns everything about it? Um, so the language itself is kind of developed almost like a community style effort, even though IntelliJ is seems to be leading that and um, owning it, but it is licensed under the Apache 2 license, and um, it seems like there's tons of community input. But it's also nice knowing that there's a corporate-backed development team pushing the language forward all the time. Sweet. Is the compiler open source, or is it open? That's... Yep, everything about it is open source as far as I've seen. <coughs> Spec the compiler, the plugins for uh, Gradle, Maven, and Ant. IDE support. Also, to kind of help get popularity about the language, like you can use this in the IntelliJ Community Edition and Android Studio without installing extra plugins. Um, <coughs> so you don't have to buy IntelliJ Ultimate to start playing around with that one. Brett? Um, is it primarily uh, being used in Android now, or are there other uses? Um, <clears throat> it's really popular in the Android circles, but um, there's a there's quite a few like web micro frameworks coming up. Like a lot of them are inspired by like Sinatra or Express on uh, JavaScript and Ruby. But um, yeah, I've seen I, there's their page of who's using Kotlin. Some of the companies are actually using it on their servers. Questions? Compared to Java, yeah. is it is it uh, harder or easier for like an iOS developer to pick up? Uh, good question. Um, <laughs> so a lot of uh, syntax similarities seem to come from a mix of like JavaScript, TypeScript, as well as Swift. Um, so I think if you're familiar with Swift, it might be a quicker language to pick up than say Java if you're used to or if you've never done Java before. So I would, yeah, I would suggest if you're an iOS developer looking to get into Android development, check out Kotlin. Any other 